Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, it's, it's, it's good to see you again. Hallelujah. Um, my name is Prophet John Anoche of the John Anoche Ministries and the Worldwide Word Ministries. God bless you so much um, for um, watching. Um, this is the Word of Life live broadcast coming live to you. I, I want to talk to you today about the resurrection and the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Praise God. You know, in this season, we, uh, we have to understand the season. And the season that we are in is a season where Jesus died, where Jesus was buried, and where Jesus resurrected from the dead. Praise the Lord. And um, I want to give you some few understanding of what this occasion means. Hallelujah. Yes, I want us to go to the scripture, you know, quickly so that we can talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power that raised Jesus up. Hallelujah. Now, there are certain things in the Bible that you need to understand. You need to understand that Jesus talked about the fact that he has power to lay down his life and he has power to, you know, take his life back. And Jesus also spoke about the fact that he is the resurrection and he is the life. When you read the book of John chapter 11, the verse 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he said, if you believe in me, even though you were dead, he said, yes, shall you live. So what is the resurrection? He is the resurrection. He is the life. He didn't say, I am the power that raised me, but he said, I am the resurrection. So the resurrection is the, is the operation, is the, is, is, the, is the operation of being raised back from the dead. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. For example, when we talk about the resurrection, that means we are talking about the event that the power of God came to hit on Jesus and reacted upon the dead body of Jesus. And Jesus was quickened back to life. And I, I want you to understand this. And the Bible talk about the power of the resurrection. The power of the resurrection. So there's a difference between the resurrection and the power of the resurrection. And that is what I want us to talk about right now. And the benefits, what the resurrection brings to us. What the power of the resurrection brings to us. I hope you understand my point. The resurrection itself that took place. That is the process of Jesus Christ coming alive again from the dead. The process of Jesus Christ awakening out of death. And then the power that came to act on his body for his body to revive and that is what i want us to talk about so let's go to the bible quickly let's read something about um the something from the book of luke chapter number the book of luke chapter number 20 okay let's go to the book of luke chapter number 20 the book of luke thank you holy spirit chapter 20 chapter 20 the verse number 35 the verse number 35 praise god Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for your power. Now, this is what the word of God says here. He said, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that wealth and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels. Now, they are equal unto the angels. He's not talking about the rank is not talking about the level it's not talking about the beings together listen to me carefully but he's talking about their nature the way they look like that they are look alike so they are like the angels said they are equal unto the angels not equal in power not equal in strength not equal in authority but he's talking about the body composition how to understand how they look like you know after the resurrection so he said unto angels and are the children of god they are like unto the angels and are the children of god being the children of the resurrection listen to me carefully being the children of the resurrection now we know that jesus christ was resurrected from the dead and let's read the book of john i want you to take note of this so if the Bible is just, just flip the Bible and we'll come back uh, to this scripture. We'll come back to the book of Luke chapter number 20. 
20 verse 35 to 36. He was talking about the resurrection. Not only of Jesus Christ, but because Jesus has been able to attain resurrection for us, what is going to happen? Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. The reason why Christianity exists is because Jesus, when he died, he was buried. He was able to resurrect. He was able to resurrect. And the Bible says, you know, he said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. When I am lifted up, I will draw all. That means, that is to say that when I resurrect and I go to the dimensions and I sit on my seat, I will draw all men to myself. So Christianity, the birth of Christianity started from the resurrection of the dead. When he resurrected from the dead, that is what the Bible says. He took his blood and presented his blood to the holy of holies, which is the most holy place. And then God accepted his blood and then pronounced authority and power unto him. And so Jesus, when he came, he said, all authority and power has been given unto me. Therefore, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And I want us to read briefly about that so that we can all appreciate when Jesus Christ came back, you know, from, from the dead. Let's go to the book of Luke. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. This is good news. This is good news. This is good news. Mandele hoski vraha paskove. Sharano ski vraha paskeva. We give God praise. We give God praise. We give God praise. We give God praise. Ma si vraha skava hadis. Now let's read from the book of Luke chapter 24. The Bible says, verse 1. He says, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of Jesus Christ. That means Jesus resurrected with his body. Now when we talk about resurrection, it's not somebody who says that I am dead. My body was crushed, buried, and then I have come back without my body. You become a spirit. But Jesus woke up with his body. And that is why he presented himself and said that, Look, a spirit has no flesh and bones such as I have. So Jesus is not a spirit. <laughs> I, I want you to be correct with the Bible, okay? Forget about whatever mindset that you have built concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ and hear the word of the Lord. Hear the holy scriptures of God because the Bible says you search the scriptures in them. In them. So the scriptures, it's truth. So in them you find truth. You can't find truth in your mind unless it is of the scriptures of God. Thank you, Lord. So he says that, and it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men, remember, again, remember, there's a revelation. Why did he say that the angels of God are two men? That means they didn't see anything like wings. They wouldn't have, uh, like, referred to them as men. That means the angels of God who were there were looking like men. There was no difference. Then he says that, Two men, behold, two men stood by them in a shining garment. In a shining garment. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Hallelujah. How do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus was no longer dead. He had risen. Amen. And then he is not here, but risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Where was these angels when Jesus was speaking to them? <laughs> that means they were with him in his ministry on the earth. And so they heard the preaching, recorded the preaching. And he said, remember he prophesied his death. He prophesied his resurrection. He prophesied how that God was going to raise him back to life. And so remember these words that he spoke. Then he, they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven, to all the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to be like idle tales, and they did not believe them. They did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloth lying by themselves, and he departed marveling to himself at what had happened. That means these people still didn't believe that Jesus had the power or there was going to be any power that will resurrect Jesus. Now, when you read these things, you see that this is a story. 
of what happened. But what about the interpretation? So that means if you want to look for interpretation, you would not be able to find the interpretations here. You need to look into the gospel. You need to look into the holistic gospel so that you can have understanding of the resurrection and what happened. The prophecies that went before Jesus' is coming and then the actual thing that happened and the interpretations, the heavenly interpretations of what resurrection of Jesus Christ meant. And let's go into the Bible briefly because I've read the story a bit to you. So now we can go ahead. Hallelujah. Now remember the angel was saying that how do you seek the living among the dead? How do you seek the living among the dead? That means Jesus Christ wasn't dead. He was alive. He was alive. Glory be to Jesus. Rabba Sopradiga. And that is what the book of Luke chapter number 20, the verse 35 and 36 says. That but they which but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that well. That means the people who are followers of Jesus, who are believers of Jesus, when they die and the resurrection comes, when they are resurrected, the Bible says, when they are resurrected, what will happen? He said, when they are resurrected from the dead, they are not given a marriage and they do not marry. But they are like angels of God because they are children from the resurrection. That means they carry a different body. That means they don't buy clothing. That, do you understand my point? That means nobody goes to stand anywhere and tell somebody, sew a cloth for me or I'm buying this uh, shirt or I'm buying this, you know, pants. No, nobody does that. Why? Because they are from the resurrection. Hallelujah. And this is the knowledge of God. How do we expand this knowledge? Let's go to the book of John chapter 11. Let's go to the book of John chapter number 11. Let's go to the book of John chapter number 11 quickly. And let's find out something from the book of John chapter number 11. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I honor you. The book of John chapter number 11, the verse number 24 and 25. Let's go there quickly. Now, I will start from the verse number 22. He said, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, this was, you know, the death of Lazarus. And Jesus waited and went to Lazarus. You know, the book of John chapter number 11. Okay, I'm reading the 23 verse. He said, Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again. In the resurrection, at the last day. So at the last day, there's going to be a power that will cause all men that are dead to resurrect. So he's talking about at the resurrection which is a process of rising again. But he never told us who is going to cause us to rise again. Is it by our own power? Is it by our own things? But the Bible says that a trumpet shall sound. And when the trumpet sound, he said the dead in Christ shall arise first. That is what the Bible says. That means that when you are a believer of Jesus, there is an amount of power that is in you that is called the resurrection. But the resurrection would not happen until there is a command that is released from heaven. So the angel of the Lord, the Bible says that, shall appear and sound a trumpet and the dead in Christ shall arise first. He never said that and God is going to raise them back. Listen to me carefully. Now remember, Jesus, when he, after his death, his burial, his resurrection. Then the Bible says he gave gift unto men. And the first gift he gave was eternal life. The first gift Jesus gave is eternal life. So the Bible says as many of us that have that life, we have passed through death. We have passed from death. That means we live on. That means even if we are dead, he said, yet shall you live. That is why Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. If you believe in me, even though you were dead, you shall live. What does that mean? It means therefore that when you receive the life of Jesus Christ, you have received the resurrection and you have received the life. Glory. Let me say that again. That means that when you are born again of the spirit, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, okay, and then you lose your body like you are waiting until the day of the sounding of the trumpet, the Bible says that 
you have the resurrection and you have the life. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He didn't say, I am the resurrection power and I am the life. He says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He said, if you believe in me, even though you die, you shall live. What is he talking about? It means that if you have Christ Jesus living in you, the eternal life, there is resurrection with you too. That will cause the body to wake up again. That will cause you to wake up again when the trumpet sounds. And this is what I want to, I want to make you understand. Let's read on. Let's read on the scripture. It's, it's beautiful. Hallelujah. Maso katala mahashi. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So he shall rise again. He shall rise again. So when you are told that when you die, you shall rise again at the last day. Then we are talking about the fact that when there is a trumpet, that is what the Bible says, you have the ability of God in you to rise again. You have the ability of God in you to rise again. Glory be to Jesus. Then Jesus said to Mary, in the 25 verse, he says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Now, the resurrection there and the life. That means the resurrection is different from the life. I am the resurrection and I am the life. He that believeth in me, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Listen to the word. Shall he live. Karano Sivahata. I don't know if people are understanding what I'm talking about. But the Bible says that Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He said that even though you were dead, you were dead. Yet shall you live. Shall pass in the future. Shall it will come in the future. Even though you were dead, okay, at the resurrection, you shall live. Then what is it? What is Jesus trying to tell us? I am driving at a point. I, I am bringing something so that you can have understanding. That means that when we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are supposed to be talking about the life of Jesus that he gave to us. And we are supposed to be talking about the resurrection itself. Now, a lot of people talk about um, the, the, the power that raised Jesus, the resurrection power, the resurrection power. Listen to me carefully. Even though Jesus has resurrection in him, the ability to rise again, because the life he has, has the ability to rise again. But there was someone who raised Jesus. <laughs> if you don't understand this scripture, you can't even understand the health of God, the healing power of God. You can't develop it. Now I'm talking about the benefits of his resurrection unto us. And the power that raised Jesus Christ. The benefit of that power also unto us. And, and, and that is the reason why we are here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Remember, this is, this is Sunday. Karanoskeba. This is the resurrection Sunday. So I want you to understand the significant impact of this day upon our lives as Christians. And then the significant impact of the power that caused the resurrection. That power unto us. And that is what I want you to understand. So when you read the Bible, be very critical about the Bible. This is what the Bible says. And, and that is why a lot of people take the Bible and they want to beat us to it. No way. We are carrying the spirit of God. We understand these things better than them. Hallelujah. Because these things are spiritually discerned. They are not culinary discerned. The Bible says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. And, and I am the life. He that believeth, he that believeth in me, he that believeth in me, though the person were dead, yet shall he live. So the moment you are born again, you believed in Jesus and you became born again. He said, if you were dead, you shall live. If your body were dead, you shall live. If your business were dead, your business will live. If your finances were dead, your finances will live. If, if any part of your being, you have stroke, if you have cancer, if you have tumor, if you were dead in any part of your body, he said, you shall live. My purpose of bringing this message to you is to cause everything that is in you to receive the resurrection. So that the power will come and act upon the resurrection. And then you rise again. That means if you don't have the resurrection in you, we may put the power of God upon you. We may put the power to cause your resurrection. You may not rise again. 
And that is the reason why when we preach the message of the gospel, that is the reason why when we preach the message of health, healing, the message of prosperity, someone has to believe first. It's not automatic. It's not that God has to perform a wonder. It's not that we have to challenge God, you know. And we, we, we bring tables and we bring argument on the table and say, okay, no way. If the Christians are preaching, demonstrate something for us. We will not be able to demonstrate because you don't believe. Because the power that is in our Jesus works by believing. Now, I hope you understand my point. Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, if you, are, if you believe, you are made right with him. And when the spoken word happens, then salvation comes. That means freedom comes. So, Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. That means the resurrection is different from the life. And the life, when you check the life, it is the way life. That is the eternal life of God. That is the eternal life that is also in Christ Jesus. The Bible says the eternal life that was with God. That means eternal life Ankasa, is in Christ. That is what I want to say. Eternal life. The eternal life of God. The what makes God have life to relate with everybody is in Jesus. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Now, listen. And that is the reason why a scripture was put that eternal life which was with God is now with us. Eternal life that which was with God is now with us. That's what Jesus said. I am the resurrection and I am the life. That is why Jesus said, I have power in the book of John. I have power to lay down my life and I have power to pick up my life again. I have power to pick up my life again because he has the power of life in him. That power of life is not subject to death. Remember when Jesus was on the cross of Calvary. He made some profound statement. And the, and the last but one statement he made, he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Now, Jesus Christ said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And then he said, it is finished. And the Bible said he gave up the ghost. That means he died. Now, what was the significant impact of that statement he made? My father, my father. You know, Jesus, when he was healing people and doing good, you know, at a point Jesus would say that. Um, the father that lives in me, he's the one that performs the miracles that I perform. He said, my father is working, therefore I'm working. Now, which was the father in him? What, who, who was that? What father was he talking about? The Bible says in the book of, you know, Luke chapter 4, the Bible says Jesus Christ, when he was baptized and when he was coming out of baptism of water, the Holy Ghost descended upon him. And there was a voice, this is my beloved son, hear him. The Holy Ghost spoke. And some people hear, some people heard. Some people also heard it like a tender. That is why the, the, the Bible says the voice of God is like a tender. It's noises. It's, it brings earthquakes. Now, so the father here, without controversy, was the Holy Spirit in his Jesus. So when Jesus was on the cross, because he took all the sins of the world upon his life and became the lamp, the sin offering, God had to leave him because God hates sin. But God will come back after the atonement has been done. Because after atonement has been done, then God come closer to you because atonement has been done. Then you qualify to receive his blessings. So God left for an opportune time so that Jesus himself will go down. And that is why he said, I have life in me to cause my death and I have life in me to, to resurrect again. He said, I have power to lay down my life and I have power to pick it back again. But the Bible says something. He said, God raised him from the dead. So Jesus did not raise himself. It was God who raised him from the dead. And so the Bible says that if the power of him that raised Jesus from the dead, if that same spirit dwells in you, he will vitalize your mortal body. That means that that power is responsible for quickening body. Listen, it's not spirit. Oh, you don't know what what the glorious gospel is about. That means that when Jesus died, God himself came, his power was released, and it came upon the body of Jesus. And then Jesus had life in himself. And that life, even though the body was dead, was still active in the spirit. I want you to understand something. Because eternal life cannot be dead. Eternal life cannot perish. <laughs> and that is why when somebody receives eternal life, even though the person is dead, yet the person shall live. I hope you understand. Good. And that life was the life that was in Jesus. Jesus' body was dead. 
But Jesus was active in hell, fighting, and his poor principalities and powers. And he made a show of them. After all this was said and done, and he got the keys of him who had it from the devil. He said, devil, give me the keys back. Then the Bible said, when he was done with all this, then he had to resurrect in his bodily form. Because his body did not touch corruption. He didn't see corruption. So that his body will be rectified. Will be changed, metamorphosed. Then he will be taken to heaven to present his blood. So the Bible said, then God, his power was released to resurrect or to cause Jesus to resurrect. So the ability of resurrection was in Jesus. But he could not just raise himself up of his body. But God had to do that work for him. So, when you develop the power of resurrection, what this is what happens. It causes your body to wake up. It causes the body, which is, which is the contact of the environment, the flesh, to wake up. So, that is why when you become born again, you receive the life of Jesus. This is a Zoe life. Your body still remains the same. People are born again, but they are going to continue sinning. Why? Because they can't control their body. You need to develop the power of the spirit. Glory. If you don't develop the power of the spirit, which has the moral power, which is the dunamis, which one of the power that it produces is the moral power, you cannot have self-control. Even though you are born again. That's why we see brothers and sisters who are born again, but they drink iniquity like water. They sin all the time. Why? Because they have not developed the consciousness of the power of the resurrection. The power that resurrected Jesus is what I'm talking about. Remember, I've, I was talking about the resurrection and the life. And I'm explaining how the power came in here. And let me, let me read something because so that you will not be confused. Let me, let me repeat the reading for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, this is it. Jesus said to Mary in the verse 25 of the book of John chapter 11. He says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Now, the word resurrection means to rise again. The terminology of resurrection, when we say resurrection, is to rise again. But what will cause you to rise again? That is the issue. To rise again. It's like you switching off your mobile phone. You switching off your mobile phone. Okay? Now, when you switch off your mobile phone, you want to switch on your mobile phone. There should be power that has charged the battery first. Otherwise, when you switch off the mobile phone, the mobile phone may not come on. Now you understand this. Okay. You take your mobile phone, switch it off. Now, the resurrection, the resurrection is in the phone. And the phone has ability to be switched on again and come again and have life in it. But the power that causes the phone to be switched on again is in the battery. And so the battery must fully be charged first. So you see, the charger must be connected to the battery to charge, to act upon the, the mobile phone, the battery, so the battery is fully charged for the phone to come on again. If your phone is dead, if your phone battery is dead, and you don't connect it to the charger that can supply power to it, you may switch on the phone, but it will still not come. Glory, I hope you understand this. God bless you so much. I will be back. Welcome back, welcome back. Um, um, glorious saint of the Lord. You, you are blessed. Hallelujah. God bless you so much for tuning in. This is the Word of Life live broadcast um, with Prophet John Anochi of the John Anochi Ministries and the Worldwide Word Ministries. Um, um, we are talking about the resurrection and the power of the resurrection. And we are saying that these are two different things. And so if you want to develop the power of the Spirit, if you want to develop the power of the Spirit, listen, resurrection has been given to you already. The moment you died with Jesus, you were raised with Jesus. So resurrection is in you. The ability to resurrect again when you hear the trumpet is in you. It's in you. And the life, the life of Jesus is also in you. The life of Christ is in you. That is the eternal life is in you. So the Bible said, Jesus said, 
you know, and we're reading the book of John chapter number 11, verse 25, where he says that I am the resurrection, I am the life. He that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And the 26 says, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believe thou this. She said unto him, Lord, yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Which should come into the world. But did they still believe that Jesus had the power to resurrect? Because resurrection is in him. And so, so far as his body was not dead, that is, his soul, Jesus as a person, his soul was not put to death. He could speak from his spirit, the resurrection, to come through him because the Holy Ghost was also upon him to cause the resurrection of another. So he spoke, Lazarus, come forth. He released the power of resurrection upon Lazarus. When it went to Lazarus, it went to Lazarus' spirit or Lazarus' soul to cause Lazarus' soul to resurrect again. And then Lazarus came forth with his own body, everything intact. Remember, when somebody died, the only way they could bury the person was to take up some of these entrails, his liver, his intestines and all that. And then before they, you know, they bury the person. So Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. That means all these things were replaced in him. All these things were replaced. And that is the work of the power of the Spirit of God. That is the dunamis power. The creative ability of God. The moment the Holy Ghost says, this is what I want to do. The word is spoken for. It acts on it because everything was made by the word. And the word is eternal life. And so the word with the power of the spirit goes to correct errors. Then the person rises again. So, you see, that is why I'm talking about the process. The process. But when Jesus resurrected, the hole in his hands was still there. The holes in the palms were still there. The holes that was in, you know, his, his feet was still there. The one in the side, he showed it. He said, you can touch my side. There was a hole. So he, he completely, you know, changed his body. The body was resurrected. There was a miraculous power. It was not only the power to resurrect Jesus, but to change metamorphose his body into another form that could go through walls. Now, when Jesus resurrected, now he went through walls. He went through walls. He went through the expanse, the dimensions. He had become, he said, I'm not a spirit, but I'm a special being. And that is what the Bible says that if you are born again, you are a special breed. You are a special kind. You are a royal priesthood, a special kind. Your, you, this breed never existed. It's a new formation that Jesus has brought for us. You don't understand this, but if you understand, you, you, you are on your way developing the power of the Spirit of God. And that is why men can develop the power of Christ. They can develop the power of God. It's just by believing these things and then critically looking at these things, how they work. Let me read another scripture to you. The book of John chapter 5, verse 24 to 25. The book of John, okay? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you praise, O Lord. Lift up your hands wherever you are and praise Jesus. And tell Jesus, I love you. You are my boss. I love you so much. I love you for your death. This is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. So Rabahaso Pradiga. This is Resurrection Sunday. Sunday early in the morning, Jesus was up. Maso Rabahasha. Now the book of John chapter 5, the verse number 24. Now we are reading all these scriptures so that you can understand the life of Jesus and the resurrection and the power of resurrection, the power that raised him up. Praise God. Now verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him, that sent me had eternal everlasting life or eternal life. Let, let me read again. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on me that sent me had eternal life. If you hear the word I'm speaking and you believe it, the one that sent me, who is God, he said you have eternal life. Listen, so having eternal life is not to confess every sin that you have done. Listen to me carefully. It's not to stand and say, I fornicated yesterday, uh, yesterday I cursed somebody, and you know, that is not to say that. That means the only way, okay, to believe, the only way to become Jesus, 
a person of Christ. The only way to become a Christ, the only way to receive Jesus in your spirit, the only way to have the life of Christ is to believe the word that he spoke to you. When you believe the word he spoke to you, then you believe the one who sent him with the word. Then you have eternal life. Then the life that is in him will be imparted into you. Then you have what we call everlasting life, eternal life. And in that life, there is the resurrection. That means that when the trumpet sound and you have that life, wherever you are, in the grave, in the graveyard, in death, wherever in the sea, you shall rise. Because you have an ability in you. So when you hear the sound that God is calling forth his people who are in the grave, in the sea, who are scattered across, but hell is not part. He didn't say hell. In the grave waiting, the Bible says that they shall rise first. He said the dead in Christ shall rise first. They will be caught up into the air to meet him. I hope you understand my point. So if you don't have the life and nature of God in you, you don't have the resurrection. If we knew this, a lot of people, a lot of religion would have come to embrace this because we are talking about a life. It is not about, you know, religion. No, it's not about I belong here and me, I don't belong here. No, no, no. We are talking about a life that came from heaven unto you. Now, let me ask you some questions. When you read books, you read a lot of, you know, religious books. Nobody ever came to say there is a kingdom called the kingdom of heaven that is going to set up a day that people are going to be taken to the kingdom of heaven. You just read books and see. All of them reference from the Bible. All of them. Because the first person that ever came to preach the kingdom of heaven is Jesus. I'm not saying that people didn't know that heaven, you know, people had the knowledge about something called heaven and they could just lift up their eyes to see heaven. But I'm talking about a kingdom that is called the kingdom of heaven that would take people to himself or itself, a place where God would take people to himself. And the one who came to preach the kingdom is telling you there is a requirement. And the requirement is that you need to have my life. By believing in the words I'm speaking to you. Right now as I'm speaking. If you just believe in this word. You have eternal life. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what anybody is saying. That is what the word says. Otherwise we need to check with the people's minds. The standard of the word. But you see the standard of the word is check with the word of God. Not in your mind. That's the standard of the word. Now so what it means is therefore is that when I am speaking the word of Jesus to you now and you believe that he has sent me to speak his word to you you believe in Jesus the one who sent me and his father the Bible says you have eternal life. Now when you have eternal life resurrection is in you. It's the process of rising again is in you. But you will need the last day for the father to send his angel to blow the trumpet to make a call. A call has to be made. That means God, when Jesus was dead, God called from heaven and said, my son, rise again. There was a trumpet that was sounded and Jesus rose. That is what the Bible, the Bible says that the power of the resurrection. And I want to read that side, you know, let me read, continue to read that side. I'm to the verse, you know. He says that, verily, verily, I say unto you, I say, I say unto you that he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, he has eternal life and shall not come into condemnation. Listen, anybody who has eternal life, that means once saved, you are forever saved. If you do have eternal life and you don't deny the eternal life, you can never be condemned. You can never be in judgment. You have passed over judgment. Judgment is passed over you. Judgment is because you have eternal life. Now this is what, but it's passed from death unto life. Are you hearing this? It's passed from death unto life. So the resurrection, when we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, what we are trying to say that we have to preach the life of Jesus to you to, for you to receive that life. So you enter into the resurrection. Then at the last day, the power of he who raised Jesus, when he sound the trumpet, you shall what? Because you are passed from death unto life, you shall rise again. Because you are not dead. You are just sleeping. The Zoe life is in you and you are just resting, sleeping. You have entered into rest. Thank you, Father. I give you praise for this word. Now, 
Let me continue with the 25 verse. He says, For very, very I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall leave. Listen. And this explains why Jesus went to the grave, went to hell, and preached the gospel. Remember, Jesus went to hell to, the Bible says he, he, his poor principalities and powers in hell. And then he went to the grave to preach to those who had perished. And then they came back. Some of them even visited the home and all that. And the Bible said, Jesus said, very, very, I say unto you, the hour is coming. The man who was dead was active in the spirit, preaching to people who are dead. Listen to me carefully. <laughs> and when he preached to you, because he had eternal life, and eternal life cannot be put to death. But he was dead in body. He was dead. His body was condemned. The Bible says his body was used for a ransom. The reason is that blood is contained in the soul, in the body. The blood of the flesh. The, he said the life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, you are getting the point. Good. So the Bible says that the, the dead that hear Jesus' voice, they shall live. They said, as the Father had life in himself. Listen. Now, that means it is not Jesus that gives life to the Father. The Father himself has life as the Spirit to live, to sit on the throne and to go anywhere he wants. But there is some kind of mutual benefit be between them. That Jesus has the life. And if God wants to relate to the earth, he has to pass through Jesus, who is the Word, because God, who is a Spirit, cannot just speak to you, because he's a Spirit. When a Spirit speaks, he speaks in his Spirit, you can't hear it. But Jesus is the activator of the voice of God, to us, the human realm. So when God speaks, he passes through Jesus unto us. So Jesus is the Word of God. And that's what the Bible says, he's begotten of God. That means he was born of God, he came from God. Such as your words come from you. You may die if your words don't die. That is why. That is the reason why. Words don't die. That is the reason why Jesus cannot die. Because, you see, he is the word of God. He is the word that God spoke. But the body that was given to him had to be sacrificed. Because the blood was on, in the body. But the spirit doesn't contain blood. Now, that's what I want you to understand. The spirit doesn't contain blood. The spirit blood is faith. The blood of the spirit is unseen. It's faith. That's the mystery of these things I'm talking about. So resurrection will open your mind to a lot of things. The resurrection power will open up your spirit, your heart, your mind to a lot of issues, a lot of good things in the word of God. But what has been the problem of the Christians? So why are we sick then? If this is the message of the gospel, why do we forsake as Christians? Why do we forsake as children of God? It is because... When we receive the spiritual life, which is the life of Jesus, which is the Zoe life, we don't, and we receive the Holy Ghost. We just receive the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues. We don't develop his power. That can vitalize the mortal body. Remember, he said mortal body. That means body that is subject to death. Jesus' body also was subject to death. And I'll read you a scripture, don't worry. I'll read you a scripture in the book of Romans, briefly. Let me finish this one. And he says, for as the father has life in himself, so had he given the son to have life in himself and had given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. So all this thing that we talk about judgment day, judgment day, who came to preach judgment day? When you ask pagans about judgment day, they believe that, uh, yes, there is going to be a judgment day. When you ask Muslims about judgment day, they believe there's going to be a judgment You ask other religious people about judgment day, all of them believe, but who came to preach it? Who came to explain it? Who came to talk about it? How can you believe in the acts of the person, the words of the person, but you don't believe in the person? That is an error, big error. Because he came to speak about the kingdom of heaven. He came to speak about resurrection. He came to speak about judgment. And a lot of people think that when they die, a lot of religious people, they know, they know that there is a judgment day. They know. And that is why they are doing right. They are doing, they are trying to do good to please God with that. So if the person came to speak about judgment and the judgment day to you, you don't believe him, but you believe his words, the judgment day, then what, who are you? What have you become? And that is what I want to tell you. So you need to question what you believe. Question it. Scrutinize what you believe. Question what you believe because this is clear in the Bible. And it is backed by power. That is why I told you in a, in a previous you know, you know, broadcast that 
The reality of Jesus is in us. It lies in us. We don't need anybody to point us to anything. Because the book said, if you believe, you shall receive power. It, for a fact, we believe and we have received power. Myself, I believe I've received power. I have power in myself. He said, you shall speak in new tongues. I'm speaking in new tongues. He said, you shall heal the sick. I heal the sick. Everything the word of God said that I will do if I believe. As soon as I believe, I'm doing them. Why? There is a knowledge that you need to have. There is a knowledge that you need to have. Let me read this one. He said, as he had given me authority to execute judgment also, because he is the son of man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. All that are which are in the graves shall hear his voice. Let me go to another scripture, okay? That is connected to the resurrection. The book of Romans chapter number 6. The book of Romans chapter number 6. Maronoski Vahadaboshka. Let me be let me be quick before my time is up. The book of Romans chapter number 6. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter number 6 verse 5. He said, for if we have been planted together in, in the likeness of his death. Listen to this word. If we have been, for if we have been planted in the likeness, together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Let me read from the fourth verse. He says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That is the reason why we baptize. Baptism is a symbolism of death, his death and resurrection. Okay, that like as Christ was raised up by from the dead by the glory of the Father. Listen, that means Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Because when he was raised by, by God, he walked in the newness of the consciousness of his new body, of his new life. The same way you became born again. You have the same body. But you need to walk in the newness. Why? By renewing your mind. And that is the explanation that is coming. You will understand this when you understand this resurrection issue. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. That is what the Bible says. So sin cannot hold on to you again. Sin is not a factor. It can't hold on to you again. I pray for somebody who is listening to me. That as you have believed this word that I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. You have passed from death unto life. In the name of Jesus Christ the son of God. Your body is vitalized. Your body is quickened. Your body is made alive. And anything that you are connected with. Connected to you that is dead. It shall live in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I command let your finances leave. I speak in the name of Jesus. Let your business leave. There are a lot of people who have lost their businesses. Their businesses have been cursed. Their businesses are dead. But I came here in the name of Jesus Christ to speak the resurrection power unto you that your things shall leave. I speak life into your things. As soon as your things begin to receive life, yourself, your body, your place, you know, you have breast cancer, you have tumor, you have eye cancer, you have, you know, brain cancer, you have whatever cancer. I speak, let cancer die in the name of Jesus because there's life in you. There's life in you. The resurrection power has the ability to, to raise back everything that is dead. And that is why you need to receive Jesus. That is why when you are dealing with somebody who is possessed with demons. Receive Jesus. When you receive eternal life, when the demon is in the body, let me tell you, and we will speak the power of resurrection, your body is raised back to life. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. This word is so powerful. It's so glorious. Razo pradiga bahasa. Now let me read something to you, profound, in the book of, you know, that's, that will be my last scripture that, you know, I'll read to you before, you know, the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Let me explain something to you then. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Uh, if you love the word, just lift up your hands and, and raise your hands and lift it up and tell the Lord how much you love him. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11, chapter 8 verse 11. Thank you, Lord. Now, I will start from the verse number 10, Okay. The, the verse number 10, he says, and if Christ be in you, listen, and if Christ be in you, okay, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. You know, the, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit that is in you is alive because of the nature of God that is in you, that is the righteousness of God. Now, what again? Then he says that, 
Then he says that, glory be to Jesus. Then he says that, but if, but if the spirit of him, but if the spirit of him or the spirit from him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, now you have eternal life. That is one life. You have resurrection. That is the ability to rise again. But the power to cause it to rise again is now what I'm coming to talk, talk to you about. Because he said, if the spirit of him, because God lives in you by his spirit. So if the spirit of him that raised Jesus up from the dead, he raised Jesus up from the dead. Listen, he raised Jesus up from the dead. Jesus up from the dead, his body up from the dead, dwell in you. That means the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, he also dwells in you. Then he said, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken. And he didn't say your spiritual body. He said your vital, your mortal body. That is the body that is prone to death, sicknesses. The body that is prone to death, sicknesses, HIV, that pestilences. The body that is subject to weaknesses, death, and subject to ill health and all that, that body, that is mortal body, that things can affect this body. It's not a living body, it's a dead body. The Bible says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Christ up from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies by, by, or through his spirit that dwells in you. Now, is the Holy Ghost in you? He's the Holy Ghost he's talking about. That's the spirit of the Father. That's the spirit of God. If he dwells in you, he will vitalize your body. But he cannot vitalize your body if you don't have his life. But Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. <laughs> so I can lay down my life and I have the ability to come back again. So when Jesus was ready to come back again, God put his power on him and Jesus came back to life. Now you understand this. So people talk about oh, the resurrection power, the resurrection power, the resurrection power. Listen. Listen again. Watch this. The life and the resurrection is in Christ. But he that raised Jesus up, raised him up, is the Holy Spirit. And he gives you the power that is called dunamis. And there are seven dimensional power in the Holy Spirit that every believer must develop to live an excellent life on the earth realm. Not when you go up there, no. To live an excellent life on the earth realm. To live a victorious life. A transcendent life. A triumphant life. You know, our, our theme for the year is a triumphant entry. Or the year, our year of triumph. Okay? To live that kind of life, you need to develop all these capabilities and abilities that I'm talking about. Of which some come from Jesus and then the other come from the Spirit of God. And that is why when you receive Jesus, you have eternal life. Then the Holy Ghost comes to give you giftings. So the gifts is not one. He says, I'm in my Father and my Father is in me. And he gives you the eternal life, which is a gift. So that you can develop the other gift from the Spirit of God, which is the other giftings. So how can we say the giftings are nine? Because the eternal life is a gift too. I pray for somebody in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, Zakharovsky Vaha. This is too good to be true. This is the word of life, light broadcast. It's a word of life. There is life in this word. You know, I didn't understand the resurrection like that. Thank God that you understand it like this. Record it. Play it. Understand it. Over and over again. So you and your household, this is, this is like a household cake for you for the period of the Easter. So that on Monday, when you have Easter Monday, you will live on this word, the consciousness of this word, and you can develop the power of God that the devil can touch you. He can touch your things. He can touch your household. He can touch your money. He can touch your investment. There are a lot of Christians, the devil is touching their investment because they don't understand this mystery. They don't understand the reason why Jesus was raised back to life. I come to Zevrahaskeva. Lingos kapalinos kija pradizola pativasete. Zakuri anda and maskujala pareboskebe. The law says makavo hoskiva. That you need to understand this word. 
But this word has the ability in itself that when you receive, it will take you from the place that you are, the place that you have been begging him, to a place where you become a son, having access to all divinity, having access to all these glorious things that I've talked about. I pray for you, somebody, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will never be the same again, that as this word has come to you and you have believed this word, Power is welling up in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I holy so That is the reason why Jesus said that when you become born again, receive the Holy Ghost and the power to be a witness. To be a witness. You cannot be a witness without the Holy Spirit. You cannot be a witness without the Holy Spirit and His power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise, O Lord. I thank God for your life. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching to the Word of Life live broadcast with Prophet John Anochi of the John Anochi Ministries and the Worldwide Word Ministries. You know, um, and my, my name my name is what I've given you. It's Prophet John Anochi of the John Anochi Ministries and the Worldwide Word Ministries, and which is the ministry, the church ministry, which is the Hill City Church. The Hill City Church. The Hill City Church is actually located, you know, um, at East Legon, at East Legon, number 14 Boundary Road, you know, at, adjacent to um, local government. And I pray that God will touch your heart. And, 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 and as God has revealed the word to you, you know, you will look for the, the word of God. You will find a Bible-believing church and Holy Spirit-filled church and you attend. And you will be planted and you will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. As you have become born again right now because of the message you have believed and you have, you have confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right now you are saved. Find a Bible-believing church. Okay, you can give us a call. You can also follow us on, you know, Twitter, YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook as well. Facebook at John Anoche Ministries. John Anoche Ministries Incorporated or INC. John Anoche Ministries at INC. You can pick our numbers from there. Uh, from there, you can follow us on, on Instagram. Instagram is Prophet John Anoche. Prophet John Anoche. And Twitter is at Prophet Anoche. At Prophet Anoche. I, I say that again. Instagram is Prophet John Anoche. Twitter is at Prophet Anoche. Okay? And YouTube, go to YouTube, go to type Prophet John Anoche. Prophet John Anoche. On YouTube, just type Prophet John Anoche or Worldwide Word Ministries. And follow us. Like our page. Follow us. Give us a comment. Send us a comment. Send us your questions. And we'll gladly answer. And this is the word of life. And it is live broadcast that is brought to you by the partners of John and Ochi Ministries. God bless you so much as you celebrate, you know, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. God bless you. And let the resurrection power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead also touch your mortal bodies, every part of your being, and resurrect you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.